Eben Byers was born in April of 1880 to a wealthy family. His background afforded him many opportunities, and he was able to graduate from Yale University. Eben was also an established athlete and won many golf championships in the early 1900s. Not long after that, his father made him president of his company, Gerard Iron Company. Eben had everything going for him in life until 1927. Then, during one of his matches, he injured his arm and was in a lot of pain. A medic recommended that Eben try Radithor, a new miracle cure at the time, and had many supposed benefits. The doctor prescribed him a small spoon per day for the pain. Eben enjoyed pain relief for a short time and reportedly felt great. He felt so great that he self-medicated and increased his dose rapidly, taking a whole bottle at a time. At the time, Radithor wasn't regulated and officials were unaware of any ill effects of radiation on the human body. But unfortunately, Eben would learn about his deadly mistake. Radithor was a radioactive drink containing radium, patented by William J. A. Bailey, a Harvard dropout. In the early 1900s, this became very popular. It was said to have health benefits, and many people began to drink it. Bailey created this cure-all by dissolving radioactive isotopes of radium into distilled water. He claimed that the concoction would cure impotence and other ailments. At the time, Bailey offered doctors a 17% commission on every dose prescribed to patients. Eben Byers was one of the most public cases of radium poisoning. As his health continued to decline, he became a national headline. People were fascinated by his story and followed his every move. Of the notable adverse effects radium had on Eben, the worst was the loss of his entire lower jaw and most of his upper jaw. This condition became known as radium jaw. The bones in the rest of his body were also deteriorating, disintegrating while he was still alive. Eben even developed holes in his skull and abscesses in his brain. His condition was so bad that his tissue was surgically removed, leaving the hole in his head open. Eben received his terminal diagnosis weeks before he passed. The steel tycoon was bedridden for the last years and suffered a slow and painful end on March 31, 1932, at 51. Eben's autopsy revealed that his body was filled with cancerous tumors and his bones were so brittle that they easily broke.